Is it true that you were the one who found the body? Yes, sir. Certainly. It was I who found the body. This morning, as usual, I went to cut my Lakota of Sidars. When I found the body, in a groove, in a hollow, in the mountains. The exact location? The exact location? About 150 meters off the Yamashina Stage Road. Can you describe the body? The body was lying flat on its back, dressed in a red-orange kimono. A single sword stroke had pierced the breast. The wound had dried up, I believe. And also, a godfly stuck fast there, hardly noticing my footstep. Is there a sword or anything? You asked me if I saw a sword or any such thing. Oh yes, you said it. Yes, sir. I found a rope. And he soared at the root of a cedar nearby. And, well, in addition to a rope, I found a comb. That was, that was all. Apparently, he must have made a battle of it, of it before he was murdered. Because the grass had been trampled down all around. Is there a horse nearby? No, sir. There was none. Can you tell me the exact time when you saw them? The time? Yes. Certainly, it was about noon yesterday, sir. The unfortunate man was on the road from Sekiyama to Yamashina. He was walking towards Sekiyama with a woman, who I have since learned was his wife. A scarf hanging from her head hid her face from view. All I saw was the color of her clothes, a maroon-colored suit. The lady's height? The lady's height? Oh, about 5 feet 3 inches. Since I am a Buddhist priest, I took little notice about her details. Well, the man was armed with a sword. Little did I expect that he would meet such a fate. Truly human life is as invanescent as the morning dew or a flash of a lightning. My words are inadequate to express my sympathy for him. Who was the man you arrested? The man that I arrested? Yes. He is a notorious brigand called Tajimaru. He was groaning in the bridge at Awataguchi. The time, and tell me every single details about him. The time? Yes. It was in the early hours of last night. For this record, I might say that the other day I tried to arrest him, but unfortunately he escaped. He was wearing a reddish silk kimono and a large plain sword. Then Tajimaro must be the murderer. Of all the robbers prowling around Kyoto, this Tajimaro has given the most grief to the woman in town. Last autumn, a wife who came to the mountain back and Pandora of the Torai Temple, presumably to pay a visit, was murdered. Along with a girl, it has been suspected that it, that it was his doing. If this criminal murdered the man, you cannot tell what he may have done with the man's wife. May it please your honor to look into the problem as well. Arigato. Can you tell me the exact time when you saw them? Yes, sir. That corpse is the man who married my daughter. He does not come from Kyoto. He was a samurai in the town of Kokufu in the province of Wakasa. His name was Kanazawa no Takehiko, and his age was 26. He was a gentle disposition, so I am sure he did nothing to provoke the anger of others. My daughter, her name is Masago, and her age is 19. She is a spirited, fun-loving girl, but I am sure she has never known any man except Takehiko. She has a small, oval, and dark-complected face. Yesterday, 
Takehiko left for Wakasa with my daughter. What bad luck it is that things should have come to such a sad end. What has become of my daughter? I am resigned to giving up my son-in-law as lost. But the fate of my daughter worries me sick. For heaven's sake, leave me no stone and turn to find her. I hate that Robert Tadramaru, or whatever his name is. Not only my son-in-law, but my daughter. Did you kill Takehiko? Yes, I killed him, but not her. And where is she gone? I can tell. Oh, wait a minute. No torture can make me confess what I don't know. Now, things have come to such a head. Promise, I won't keep anything from you. Yesterday, a little past noon, I met that couple. So I managed to lure the couple in the mountains. It was quite easy. I became their traveling companion and I told them there was an old mount in the mountain over there and that had dug it open and found many mirrors and swords. I went on to tell them I buried the things in a grove behind the mountain and that liked to sell them at a low price to anyone who would care to have them. When he came in front of the group, I told them that the treasure were buried in it and asked them to come and see. The man had no objection. He was blended by greed. To tell you the truth, my plan worked just as I wished. So I went into the group with him, leaving her behind alone. The groove distances about 50 yards ahead. There's a rather open clump of cedars. It was a convenient spot for my purpose. I seized him from behind because he was a trained, sword-bearing warrior. He was quite strong. I soon tied him up to the root of a cedar. Where did I get a rope? Thank heaven. Being a robber, I had a rope with me. Since I might it have to scale a wall at any moment. Of course, it was easy to stop him from calling out by gagging his mouth with falling mango leaves. When I disposed of him, I went to his woman and asked her to come and see him, because he seemed to have been suddenly taken sick. The woman, her sage hat off. The instant she caught sight of her husband, she drew a small sword. I've never seen a woman of such violent temper. The most spirited woman is defenseless, without a weapon. At last, I could satisfy my desire for her without taking her husband's life. Yes, without taking his life, I had no wish to kill him. I was about to run away from the group, leaving the woman behind in tears. When she frantically clung to my arm, in broken fragments of words, she asked that either her husband or I die. She said, it was more trying then than death to have, to have their shame known to two men. She gasped out that she wanted to be the wife of which she were survived. Tell me about the man who violated you and murdered your husband. Every single details, please tell me. That man in a red silk kimono, after forcing me to yell at him, laughed mockingly as he looked at my bound husband. How horrified my husband must have been.
And by the light gradually grew fainter Till the setter were lost to view Lying there, I was enveloped in deep silence Then someone crept up to me I cried to see who it was But darkness has already been gathering around me Someone That someone drew the small sword softly out of my breast In its invisible hand And the same time, once more blood flowed into my mouth and once and for all, I sank down into the darkness of space.